This is the eighth installment in a series of videos where I document the build of an entire bat suit from Ben Affleck's cancelled 2022 Batman movie. In this portion of the build, I'll be focusing on the boots and shin guards, some of the most recognizable pieces of the suit's lower armor. These will be created using a combination of 3D printed PLA, resin, and flexible TPU material. Let's go. What's up you guys, my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. If you've been enjoying this series, please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All the files for this build can be found on the DO3D website and as always, I'll have a link in the description below. For this build, I printed the shin guards front and back on my Bamboo Lab P1S in PLA material. Due to the overall height and curvature of these parts, I had to split each shin and boot piece in half for them to fit on my build plate. After scaling the boots to 95%, I performed the cuts right there in Bamboo Studio but if you don't have a bamboo printer, you can also use mesh mixer. I make sure to leave clean seams that will be easy to weld back together later. Each piece is sliced in bamboo studio at 0.12 millimeter layer height using bamboo PLA with tree supports enabled. Printing took about 30 hours total for both legs combined and everything came out looking super clean right off the plate. Before I move on, I want to give a big shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They printed the flexible and resin based parts for this build, including the ankle armor pieces and flexible straps. Whether you're prototyping electronics or creating custom 3D prints, PCB Way has you covered with a massive range of materials, fast turnaround times, and incredibly affordable prices. I've been using their services throughout this bat suit build, and the quality has been top notch. So if you're working on your next cosplay or product prototype, check out PCB Way using the link in the description below. And again, Huge thanks to them for supporting the channel. Now that all the PLA parts are printed, I have to join the halves together. I use an old soldering iron to solder the seams, melting small bits of spare PLA filament into the gaps for added strength. This method fuses the parts together permanently and avoids the use of any messy adhesives. After cooling, the parts are rock solid and even though the seams don't look great now, they will be less apparent after post-processing. The resin and TPU printed parts arrived from PCB Way perfectly printed. The resin pieces are super crisp, while the TPU straps have just enough flex to make walking comfortable once the boots are assembled. The TPU parts are created using SLS manufacturing, which is why particularly no layer lines are visible. This is more expensive than FDM printing TPU, but the quality in my opinion is worth it. Next, it's time for surface prep. I start by sanding the welded seams on the PLA parts with 100 grit sandpaper. This helps even out the surface before adding a layer of epoxy or 3D coating to the entire piece. XTC 3D brush on coating is mixed per the box instructions and applied to all the PLA boot pieces with a foam brush. The layer lines on these parts are already pretty small so only a thin layer is needed. However, I do lather it on a bit heavy over the welded seams to ensure that all the crevices are filled. Once the coating is fully cured, the parts are sanded with a mechanical sander. I use 150 grit sandpaper to quickly even out the 3D coating. Now, be careful not to go overboard with a mechanical sander because it can burn holes in your parts. If needed, sanding can also be done by hand in the harder to reach places. Since the resin parts from PCB Way are already really smooth, all that's needed to be done is some light wet sanding with 600 grit sandpaper. This takes off just enough resin to remove any remaining prominent layer lines. Once everything is sanded, I rinse all the parts off with cold water and spray them with two coats of rust primer. After the primer dries, the PLA parts are sanded again with 220 grit sandpaper. I don't incorporate water yet because the grit size is still low enough I don't get a lot of caking. Next, I move to wet sanding with 320 to 600 grit sandpaper. I pay special attention to the seams on the PLA parts and decrease the grit size for those sections as needed. I don't show it, but I go back a few times to add more coats of primer, specifically over the seams where the parts were soldered together. The resin parts don't need to be sanded with the lower grit paper and can be immediately wet sanded with one. 1000 grit. I rotate between priming and sanding all the parts all the way up to 2000 grit until I get a finish that I'm happy with. For the paint, I'm going to be using the same finish I've used for the rest of the build, which is Rust-Oleum's Matte Black followed by Rust-Oleum's Matte Clear Coat. This creates that soft, stealthy finish that's perfect for this bat suit. I applied two coats of black and let it cure for 48 hours before adding the clear coat. The extra curing time helps avoid cracking and peeling when applying the clear coat. Once the paint is dry, I use silver acrylic paint and a small paintbrush to add detailing to the pieces. All the armor gets a subtle silver dry brush along the edges to highlight the contours and simulate warm metal. I try to keep this effect pretty minimal, just enough to make the parts pop under the right lighting. I keep a damp paper towel on hand in case I apply a bit too much acrylic paint. 
While the detail paint is drying, I start planning on how these boots and shin guards are actually going to fit together. The design includes a few layered segments, so I'll be using contact adhesive and elastic straps to hold everything in place. The elastic straps will act as flexible joints, allowing me to bend my ankle and move more naturally when wearing the suit. I attach three separate straps to each shoe topper and connect the topper to the front shin guard. I ordered these boots off Amazon to use for this cosplay. They were relatively cheap, don't go too far up my leg, and have the aesthetics I'm looking for. The boots go right above my ankle which helps hold the shin guards up and keeps them in place. These boot assemblies need to be easy to take on and off so I plan to use more elastic straps in combination with my 3D printed TPU parts. One end of the TPU straps are slid into the side of the shin guards and secured into place using contact adhesive. Before connecting the other end of the straps to the guards, the TPU straps are glued to the back of the boots. There actually aren't any straps at the top of the boot which is causing the two pieces to separate, so I'm going to install an elastic strap there to help hold things together. I glue a piece of velcro to one end of the long strap and glue the other end to the inside of the shin guard. The other half of the velcro is glued to the opposite side of the shin guard. This helps keep the top portion of the back of the boot from pulling away from the rest of the assembly. As far as connecting the other end of the TPU straps to the shin guards, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. After messing around with them for a while, I found that they stay in place by just inserting the straps into the holes on the other end of the shin guards. The friction is enough to keep the straps from coming undone and the boot assembly from falling off. In the future, if this becomes an issue, I'll probably just use some extra velcro to help keep things in place. Well, the shin guard boot assemblies are completed and here's what they look like on my legs while wearing the black boots from Amazon. The boots I got are super comfortable and since nothing is glued to them, I can use them for other things besides just this costume. I think these shin guards look a lot better than the ones I made for my Arkham Knight suit and they're also way more comfortable. They have the perfect balance of rigidity and flexibility and the matte finish ties seamlessly into the rest of the suit. The next video will be covering the thighs and knee pads, so be on the lookout for that because the lower half of this bad suit is about to come to life. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you next time and stay classy.